In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly route USB data lines using KiCad. The thing to keep in mind when routing USB data lines is these are a differential pair and they must have a specific impedance, which as specified by the USB specification is 90 ohms. Now, keep in mind there are various speeds of USB. There's low speed and full speed. Um, full speed is 12 megabits per second whereas high speed is 480 megabits per second. So there's a big jump from full speed uh, up to high speed USB. Now, if, when using just the full speed, so the 12 megabits per second, or even low speed, which is even a lot slower, then the impedance matching for the differential data lines isn't quite as critical. However, it is super critical if you're going to do high speed USB. However, even if you're only going to do full speed, it's still just always, a, it's, a, it's good to design the data lines properly so you don't have any unexpected issues. So in this design, uh, I'm not going to do the whole design. We're just going to focus on these USB data lines. So we just have a USB micro port. Um, we have a, our ESD protection that protects the, the USB data lines and the 5 volts that goes to the external pins. And then we just, uh, here we just have an ESP32-S3 module, which uh, has built in full speed or support for full speed USB. So we're just routing these two data lines uh, from the connector all the way up to the module. So that will look like this. Here's our board. Um, we have our USB connector here. This is our ESD protection. And then we have our ESP32 module here. You can see here are the two, the negative and the positive USB data lines. Okay, so the next step is now that we, we know we need to impedance match them to 90 ohms is to do the necessary calculations to figure out what type of traces we should have. And there are lots of different tools online for doing uh, trace impedance calculations. Uh, KiCad has a built-in software tool calculator for doing this as well. But I happen to like this one at DigiKey. So there's different types of uh, impedance that we're, we're going to look at. And let's say, for instance, uh, like a microstrip here, this would be, so a microstrip is you just have the one conductor. You have the red, which is the dielectric insulator. And then underneath that, you have the ground plane. And the impedance, keep in mind, is from this, the trace in question to the ground plane underneath of it. This is not resistance. This is complex impedance. And this would, you would use this, the microstrip, for instance, if you were doing a, an antenna, uh, routing a, an RF antenna, which is typically matched to 50 ohms impedance. But what we're doing is we're using an edge coupled microstrip because we have two lines that are running right next to each other. So there's electromagnetic coupling between them. So we need to use this specific, uh, the edge coupled microstrip calculator. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the trace width. So we want to solve for the, the trace width and input the other, the other uh, values. So we're a differential impedance. We're going for 90 ohms. The trace thickness, so this is how thick this copper is. Uh, this can be measured in mils, you know, thousands of an inch, or can be measured in millimeters. Or commonly with PCB layout, it will be just measured in ounces per square foot. So this just says uh, like one ounce per square foot is very common as a standard uh, trace thickness. So I'll leave that at one ounce per square foot. So that's basically, uh, you know, you've got one ounce of copper that's spread out over one square foot of area. And from that calculation, it's easy to to convert this into an actual thickness like mils or millimeters. So you can specify all here, but I'm just going to leave it in ounces per square foot because that's typically what the PCB manufacturer tells you is the thickness in ounces per square foot. Now the, the height, this is H here. So this is the height, the thickness of the dielectric. So I'm going to, I'm using PCB way. So typically you want to look uh, for the stack up. And in this case, I'm going to be doing a four layer board. So we're going to scroll down here and look for the stack up for a four layer board here. They give different ones for depending on the copper thickness. We're doing the one ounce. So you know, the one ounce per square foot on the top and the bottom. So this is the stack up we have here. Layer one, which has our differential pair lines, our dielectric insulator. 
level layer two, which is is going to be our ground plane. Then level three and level four, or layer three and layer four, don't really uh, matter for this uh, specific example because we're not doing a full design. I'm just focusing on the data lines. So what we need for H is we need this height of this dielectric. Uh, insulator, which it's given you is 0 0.11 millimeters. So I'm going to go 0 0.11 and millimeters. And we also need to enter our dielectric constant, which is the dielectric constant for the insulator, which they also give you here is 4.29. And then we can, what we can do is we can set our trace spacing so for this particular manufacturer, six mils is the minimum trace spacing. It's also the minimum trace width. You can actually go down to, I believe, four mils, but there's extra cost, anything below six mils. So I'm going to just set this at, let's just say, let's do this at uh, eight mils. And what that gives you is a calculated trace width of 6.7 mils. So to get the 90 ohms impedance, we have to have two of our traces. Each trace needs to be uh, 6.7 mils wide. So each of these, and then the gap between them has to be eight. If we change this, let's say I change the spacing to six. Well, now the trace width also changes. I'm going to just leave this at eight and 6.7. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into our KiCad. Zoom in here because we first have to route up our ESD protection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here and I'm going to go differential pair. And what happens is KiCad knows because I'm, I've used an underscore N and P that these are a differential pair. So it's going to route them according to the rules. I'm going to change uh, what I've got these values set for. So the width was 6.7 mils and the trace gap with 8 mils. Okay. And what you can see here is what happens is sometimes when you're doing the differential pair routing, you, you can't connect it to the next connector. It gets a little confused. Um, so what you can do is you stop here and then you can go in and do uh, just a single wire, uh, single, yeah, we'll just do a single ended routing. Let me scoot those and make sure I'm at the same 6.7. Okay. and then. So I got this random piece here. Let me get rid of. Okay, and uh, then we need to short across here because what you don't these two pins are not really connected, um, but I've connected them in the schematic. Um, for instance, see uh, like uh, pin only one, two, uh, four, and five really are connected internally. The other pins are not connected, um, but the reason. I'm connecting them is it allows me to route the data lines straight across instead of I don't want to have to come in here and do like a right angle or anything like that. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to differential mode. Let me just make sure I still got the right value 6.7, trace gap 8 mils. And I'm going to go up here and let's, uh, I'm going to just get it close like that. And then we can, I'm going to actually, I'm going to just scoot all this over just a tiny amount. Okay. Now I'm going to switch back to single ended wire routing mode there and there. And, uh, so there we go. That is everything for the, the trace. The only thing left is we need to make sure that we have a a proper ground plane underneath these two differential data lines. And that ground plane needs to be on layer two, the, the layer right underneath the layer that these are routed on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer two and I'm just going to place a fill zone and we can actually just, uh, I'm just going to draw it there. We want to connect it to ground, uh, solid fill. Okay. And now we can just draw the rest of the other points of this. I'm going to just kind of free draw this. Okay, there we go. So now I should be able to do a fill all zones. Okay, so there we have our two properly routed uh, USB data lines matched to 90 ohms impedance. 
with the ground plane that's underneath of them on layer two. If you have any questions from this video or any of my videos, I've created a new AI chat assistant that has been trained on all of my YouTube videos and all of my blog articles. You can access this new AI tool in the link in the description below. You can ask it any questions. It will pull the answers from my content and then also direct you to the specific point in my videos where I answer that question.